So in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to make Tetris in Unreal Engine 5. To keep this video short and simple, I avoided adding any features that I felt were not necessary to play Tetris. And I have kept the graphics of the game as simple as possible. If there is enough interest in this video, then I might create a second part where I will show you how you can improve the visuals of this game and add those extra features in to make this look more like a Tetris game. I also want to mention that all the programming for this tutorial is done on blueprints. I chose to use blueprints because programming C++ in Unreal is very unintuitive, complicated and it's not really well integrated like it is in Unity. And since this tutorial is for beginners, I felt like blueprints were the better choice. With that said, we are going to start with the tutorial. So the first thing we are going to do is create a new blank project. And then I am going to create and open a new level. Open this up. And our level is pitch black because there is nothing in here. Not even lighting. So to add lighting into our game, you can navigate to window and choose this environment light mixer over here. Alright, so this allows us to easily add environmental lights and brighten our level. So in here, we are going to add a sky atmosphere, exponential height fog, skylight and a directional light. And these are the only options I really need. I am fine with the default settings. So I am just going to close this. And if my project looks different from yours, it's because I have optimized some settings like reducing the frame rate for my project, disabling real time rendering and setting the viewport scalability to the lowest setting. And I have done all of those because my computer is a bit slow and because we are making Tetris, we don't really need great graphics or performance. So now that I have set up my level, we are going to start working on our planes. So once again, right click, create a new blueprint actor. So I'm going to call this BP plane. Open this up. We're going to add our plane into our blueprint over here. So click on add over here and then select plane. So after this, go to the content role and we're going to create a new material. I'm going to call this matte plane. And inside our material, I'm going to add a new vector parameter and I'm going to name this color. And after that, connect it to the base color in our master node over here. So what this node allows us to do is that by getting a reference to this node over here, we can actually modify the color of this material in real time. So click on apply. After that, we're going to close it and then in the event graph, I'm going to drag out this begin play node and then search for create dynamic material instance. And inside here, I'm going to select this option which has the plane over here. So after that, we're going to search for our material that we just created. And then I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call this DMI plane. So what this node over here does is that it creates a new type of material based on our material plane over here that you can actually modify in real time and add this material into our plane over here. And we are storing the reference of that material of this newly created material into this variable called DMI plane. And later on we are going to get a reference to this variable over here in another blueprint to change the color of our plane as our game is running. And that's all we need to do in our plane blueprint. So compile this and we're going to close it. And after this, we're going to create another blueprint. And this blueprint is what's going to control basically everything that's going to happen in our game. So once again, select actor and I'm going to call this BP Tetris. So open this up. So in our event graph, I have already made all of these nodes over here. So I'm not going to sit around here and make each and every single nodes that you see over here because that would make this tutorial way too long and we have a lot of nodes to cover. So to finish this tutorial a lot sooner, I'm just going to create the nodes in advance and explain how they all work 
and you can just pause the video and recreate the notes in your project and to hide these comments or text from blocking our view of the nodes you can click on this icon over here to hide them and that way they won't show up when you zoom out in your event graph so i'll first explain what this code over here does we have a for loop that has this bit of code over here and it will execute this part of the code 216 times and the reason why it executes 216 times is because of these two variables over here the field width and the field height which each represents the width and height of our playfield or the game area so the width of our playfield is 12 and the height of our playfield is 18 and if we were to multiply these two together it would be 216 and we are subtracting this value with the value 1 because our for loop starts at 0 over here and inside our for loop we are using the spawn actor node to spawn our bb planes which you can actually select by clicking on this drop down icon over here and choosing bp plane we are setting the transform of this plane temporarily at the location of this actor and we are storing a reference to each and every single bp plane into this array called screen and the variable type of this screen array is bp plane and after this for loop is done executing we are going to start executing this bit of code over here our nested for loop and in case you're wondering what this thing over here is this is called a reroute node and a reroute node is useful for organizing the connections between two pins by just double clicking on any of the wires over here and also i forgot to mention something notice the variable name over here px and py looks different from the variable names that we have given over here to actually stop unreal from changing the names of our variable in the event graph go to editor preferences and under general appearances we have this option over here called show friendly variable names make sure to uncheck this and after that you can see the variable names in the event graph is the same as what we have named over here in our variables tab over here so inside our for loop we are basically getting the reference of each plane inside of this array over here and giving it a new position or transform based on these values over here and i will explain how all of this works in more detail after i run my project so compile this project and i forgot to mention in the cell size make sure to give a value of something like a hundred and you can try tweaking this value a bit as you run the project so anyways back in our level we need to actually first drop our bp tetris into our level and drag this down in the z axis so that our planes will get spawned below and we can actually see it from above so we're going to run this project now and here you can see our planes have all been generated we have created the play field or the game area and there is still a lot to do like adding the colors and such because right now all of our bp planes are using a default color you can press the F8 key in your keyboard to unpossess the camera and after that you can actually go around the level and click on any of these planes over here and you can see our planes are generated in a specific order so over here is the BP plane 0 then we have the 1, 2, 3 and so on but yeah, you need to make sure that our planes are generated in this order over here. So before we continue any further, I want to explain how this part of our logic or nodes work. And to better explain how this works, I had done some modifications that will display the index of the plane in the screen array. So if I were to run this, we can actually see the index of the plane. And I'm going to use this screenshot over here. To better illustrate what we have done in our blueprint so these numbers above our play field in the x-axis are the column numbers and these numbers in the y-axis are the row numbers back in our event graph these two for loops over here 
are the ones that are going to iterate through the numbers in the x and y axis. Now, using those numbers, we can get the index of a plane in here by using the formula y into field width plus x. So, suppose I wanted to know the index of this plane over here. Since our for loop would already have the values in the x and y axis, which is 4 and 1, by using the formula 1 into 12 plus 4 equals 16. And that's how we got this plane to be in this specific position over here. This is what we have done over here. When our game first starts, it's going to execute this part of our code first. And after that, it's going to execute these two for loops over here. And the values stored by both of these for loops in the px and py variables over here is going to be 0 at first. Hence why the plane with the index 0 is first. The second time our for loop runs, the value of px over here is still going to be 0. But the value of py over here is going to be 1. And when the formula is applied, we get 12. And hence why the plane with the index 12 is at the bottom over here. And this will keep on going until this for loop is done executing with the value of py being 17. After that, this for loop over here is going to execute again with the value stored inside px this time being 1. And if the for loop for the y axis is going to execute again, using the formula, we will get the values 1, 13, 25, 37, and so on. And it's going to keep generating the index column by column until we reach the 11th column over here with the final value of 215 at the end over here. So after that, we need a new integer array called playfield and we are filling it up with the number 0 216 times. Now, I will explain why we need this array in the next part of this tutorial series. But for now, I'm going to explain how this playfield array works. Basically, our playfield array is made and read in the same way as our screen array. So back over here, the index of the elements stored in our playfield array would perfectly coincide with the elements in our screen array. And each element stored in our playfield array would correspond to a specific color. For example, the number 0 would mean empty space. And we could create a color for that to represent empty space like what you have seen at the start of this tutorial. But the number 8 could mean the boundary of our game area. So we need to highlight that with a different color and so on. This way we can display our game through our screen array and that's exactly what we are going to do now. So back over here, I have created a new function called create boundary and have placed it before the two for loops over here. And inside our function, I have created these two for loops over here in the same way as we have created them in the event graph. And we are storing the values or the current iteration of these two for loops in the x and y local variables over here. You can tell apart a local variable from a non local variable by looking at this v icon over here. And you can create a local variable by just clicking on this plus icon over here. And after that, we are checking if any of the indexes correspond to the border of our play field or game area. So back in here, if the value of x is 0, it means we are at this column over here, which is our border. And if the value of x is equal to the field width, that means it's at this column over here, and this is also our border. And in our code, we are subtracting the field width by 1 because we are counting from 0. So that means the index of our final column is actually 11, not 12. And if the value of y is equal to field height, which means we are at this row over here, and this is also our border. And we want all these borders over here to be highlighted with a different color. And for that we are changing the numbers stored in the indexes at these areas of our play field from the number 0 to the number 9. So you get the point, we have a bunch of zeros over here, it's all zeros, it's zero over here, it's zero over here, it's zero over everywhere, to this point over here. And by identifying the borders of our play field, what we are doing is we are basically changing that zero to the number nine. And that's exactly what we have done over here. So if the index is at the boundaries, 
it is going to be the value 9 over here. Alright. And back in our event graph over here, I have set up the code to basically check if any of the elements in our play field array is zero or not. And if it's true, then we're going to get the reference of our plane. And once again, the index over here, which we are using to get the plane from our screen array, and the index over here are both the same. So that means we are getting the same index from both the play field and the screen array. So yeah, we are getting the reference of our plane. And from that reference, we are getting the DMI plane that we have created in our BP plane before. And using the set vector parameter value over here, we are able to change the color of our plane. So make sure the name that you give over here is the same as the name you have given to the vector parameter in the material we have created before for our BP plane. And you can click on here to change the color. And yeah, that's really about it. So I'm going to compile this and run our game to show you what we have done. You can see the borders are all black this time because again, the values stored in our play field at these borders over here are all nine. And that's the reason why they're black. And at the center, they're all zero. And that's the reason why they're all white. We can actually change this to something else if you want. So maybe for the false, we can give a different color. Just recreate the nodes like this. Once again, compile and run our game. And here we can see our level with the borders this time being red. So yeah, that's it for this video. In the next part of this tutorial series, we are going to create our tetromino pieces and move them around and such. Like and subscribe if you haven't, so you can support my channel. And if you like my video, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks a lot for watching and see you later. Bye.